Welcome back to Still Speak. This is episode 9 of my Summer Well series. If you've missed the last 8 episodes, I suggest you pause and listen to those first so you can better understand what is being discussed in this episode. And we are getting close to the end. Next episode should be the last one until we know more information. I want to revisit Don and his stepsister involving sexual assault because I want to make sure that I'm being clear enough and that I don't receive a ton of hate emails because I know it's a very sensitive topic, so I need to be clear. I'm not excusing any type of sexual assault. I'm not defending it. I'm not justifying it. And I'm not downplaying it. What I was saying was that it's not just black and white and there may be much more involved in that situation as far as the history of the Wells family goes. And in my opinion, and also according to the NCSBY article that we went over in episode 7, teen sex offenders don't typically go on to re-offend, unlike adult offenders. I personally don't think these two stories, you know, one being Summer's missing and two the stepsister, or related or connected, at least not thus far due to the absence of any evidence of such. Two horrible stories, but in my view, two separate situations. Rumors are circulating that other victims are coming forth, and I have no details further than seeing rumblings about it, but I need to say, and I need people to understand that a lot of people come forth in these types of cases to claim things that later get turn out to not be true there are people i mean who confess to crimes they didn't commit i'll never understand it but it happens and we know the stepsister story is true because don did confirm it albeit he definitely downplayed it Now, for an example, in the Watts case, and here I go again, back to that crazy case, there were two people who came out with elaborate stories of Chris having affairs with them on top of the one that he was having an affair with. And one was a gay man who even got a spotlight on a national news media outlet to tell his story, and it turned out that the FBI investigated him and interviewed him and he was full of nonsense and he was just somebody who wanted 15 minutes of fame. But anyways, I mean, we can think and definitely discuss Don not being a great guy and, you know, that he has a hideous past. Doesn't necessarily mean he's involved in the uh, disappearance of his daughter. It could be, well, but we don't know. I, I know people want to stick to the belief that people don't change but i hate to break it to you sometimes they do and i'm not sure if that's the case with don but the police know if don's a changed man right now back to candace and at times again we're going to be mentioning don because you know these two go together they're husband and wife and mother and father a summer when chris from the interview room and candace arrived at her property they started going from area to area going over the details of what happened prior to her vanishing and candace described summer being asleep in the car when they got home that day which we know she was sleeping due to the accidental video that candace claims was taken a few minutes from home and she said you know that she you know shook her or touched her and summer quote jumped right up unquote (laughs) and then she unbuckled her people thought this was a slip up or a red flag because they took jump up you know jumped up as if literally she jumped from you know the back seat physically now i use jump up as a descriptive type of phrase i don't believe that she actually meant jumped up (laughs) <laughs> you know, just that she jumped out of her sleep. I guess another way would, of saying it would be she snapped out of it or she popped up. Um, and in the accidental video, you know, we do see a seatbelt. So it's not far-fetched that she did unbuckle her. Now, we know the story goes from Candace that when they came in, she asked where Summer was. 
She asked the boys. And then she proceeded to holler for her in the basement to which she got no answer. People didn't believe that she would ask where Summer was right away. Um, and then they were bothered that, you know, that she had hollered for Summer in the basement right away as well. And they wondered why, they, you know, she would be calling them her. And I said, you know, I'm an overprotective parent. So for me, this is not unusual. But I don't believe that Candace is an overprotective mother. I keep tabs on my kids even in my small house, which again is under 1,500 square feet. And I said in another episode, a quiet child out of sight, you know, anyone who's a parent knows that that means they're usually up to no good. So I constantly, you know, peek in on them, check to see where they are, and make sure that everything's okay. But I don't believe that Candace is the same way. I don't. But another explanation for this could be, you know, it was not as quick as she described, meaning... Maybe it was not as soon as she got inside, okay? Now, she told the story, like, in order, but there was not not a lot of clarifying. So, you know, maybe it was five or ten minutes after being inside the house that she then asked the boys and then, you know, hollered for her. I don't know. I mean, it's possible, right? And they wanted to know why, if... Summer's room was in the basement. Why Candace would holler for her? I mean, it was around 5 45, 6 o'clock ish. Let's just say between 5 30 and 6 p.m. You know, maybe she was calling her up to see if she wanted to eat dinner, what she wanted to eat. Maybe she was calling her up to take a bath. Maybe she wanted her to take off the clothes she had been wearing um, half the day. Or maybe she realized that she was out of sight you know, for a while at this point and wanted to make sure she was not outside alone. I don't know. Just throwing out possibilities here. I mean, why do parents call their kids? It's usually for something, right? Because if they're being quiet, we're not going to want to bother them, if you know what I mean. (laughs) So at one point, Chris and Candace go to the basement and we can see that much of Summer's toys are still there and she starts showing Chris them. And we got to see Summer's little Paw Patrol toys. She put the put them in large pots um, that she helped her grandmother fill with cactuses and they're still there and they haven't been removed her stuff being there is a good sign because sometimes in cases you will see that a parent will get rid of these types of items which is obviously a red flag because why are you getting rid of toys and clothes if you think your child may possibly return while not sold yet that Candace was involved with her daughter disappearing, I do think that she is trying to paint herself as a, you know, cautious, safety-conscious, non-neglectful, or non-attentive mother. I know for sure that when people live, like, on a large property, they tend to have a false sense of security. I'm not saying she did or she didn't have a false sense of security, but that is common, something to consider. I don't believe she was over at her mother's house for two to five minutes like she had estimated that being said though i'm not sure she intentionally lied about that to paint herself as a very doting mother or just that her understanding of time is off i mean you know i'll say to my husband hey watch the kids i'm gonna run to the gas station for two minutes but really come on it's not two minutes right I gotta get in the car, I gotta drive there, I gotta get out, there's a line, I gotta get my... Nah, nah, nah. It's, it's not two minutes, but it's just like uh, uh, what I say, like a phrase that I say, like, oh, I'll be back in two minutes, oh, I'll be back in five minutes, and really it's not. You know, or you ever hear a parent say, you know, I looked away for two seconds and X, Y, Z happened, when it's never two seconds, right? It's more like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, 60 seconds, but it's never just two seconds, But I do think that even with a two to five minute window, there is a possibility somebody could have taken her. I am willing to bet it was more like 20, 25 minutes that she was gone. But let's do a little scenario here. Let's go with five minutes just for the heck of it. Five minutes. Okay, let's let's max it out because she said two to five. So we'll just we'll just say five. So, Summer goes inside, and let's say she plays for a minute, 60 seconds. And then, 
you know, she immediately wants to go downstairs because that's where her room is, so most of her toys are down there, okay? So she goes down, and now we're on minute two. Minutes, you know, three and four, she's down there, and Candace is over at her, her mom's house, right? And a predator hidden up on the property had seen Candace walk over to her mom's house and made their move. On minute five, Candace is walking back into the home, right? So there's the five minutes, she claimed, that it took from her to go from helping Grandma with the knee brace to getting back in the house. Now, let's go on minute six. Su- Candace asks where Summer is. The boys stay in the basement. By minute seven, she's now walked over to the staircase, and she is, you know, hollering down to see where she's at. And... While she's upstairs asking the boys, this is minute seven, asking the boys where she is and as she's walking to the stairs and he's even at the top of the stairs of this secret staircase, the the predator is in the basement. Possible. Totally possible. Or that they're already gone. But let's just say they're down there. So some so Candace is upstairs, Summer and Predator are downstairs. Okay. And now Candace goes downstairs. And by the time she's downstairs, Summer and the Predator are outside. And by the time she's done looking downstairs, she goes outside. And by the time she gets outside, they're no longer outside. They're now, you know, they've already run and kind of done a run hop thing down the hill at the back of the property. Right there, outside that door, across the little gravel driveway. As Candace is now outside, they're completely out of sight. And by minute nine, you know, they're gone. And Candace now hops in her car, and she starts driving around the property, and Summer and the Predator are long gone. And that's why she doesn't see what, um, you know, anybody or anything. So it's possible. So let me say that one more time if that seems a little bit confusing. What I'm saying is let's just say that on Minute 5, she really did walk back in the house. But while she already just walked back in the house... Summer was downstairs being abducted while she's upstairs. It could have been before that, but let's just say. And it could be that by the time she got down there, they were already now outside. And then by the time she was in the basement, done looking for her down there, by the time she got outside, they were already down the hill and gone. Okay? Now, I said running, hopping down the hill because people are saying that this hill is a little too rough of a terrain and... You know, for someone to be out there running with with Summer. Have you ever run down a hill? (laughs) You go a hell of a lot faster than going up, right? Yeah, of course. And you kind of do like this, you know, as you're gaining speed, it's like this half run, half hop type of thing, right? As you're going down the hill. And if you're on a mission to get to the bottom of that hill, you can get down there pretty freaking fast. You can. Seconds. And yes, even while carrying an alive 40-pound-year-old child. Because, you know, you know when a child's in a pool and you go to lift them, they're, they're a lot lighter in the pool than they are outside of the pool. Well, when you have that momentum on the hill and you're kind of doing this run, they're going to start to feel not as heavy because you're, you're gaining momentum. So it's absolutely possible. It, it really is. Now, I know it sounds insane, you know, like, wow, it's really cutting it. But it's possible. It is. Now, that's a possible scenario, but I believe it was more than that amount of time that she claims that she was at her mom's trailer, like I said. I just think she's trying to paint herself as a careful mother because, you know, she doesn't want to be seen as, like, you know, in a negative way or, or that she's the reason why her daughter was able to be abducted or to get off the property, right? It was her fault. So she's trying to kind of, you know, paint herself in a better light. Except this backfired because if this is what she intended, it it definitely backfired. Because this small frame of time that she gave only made people suspicious of her. So it did not work if that was her intent. I'm not sold that Summer, you know, did not go out on the property alone. 
I do believe that she's not the type of child who would have walked off the property before. Doesn't mean that she didn't that day. Because even Hunter said that. Um, but, like I said, there's a first time for everything, and she could have. And I don't think that, but we have to leave it on the possibility list. I do believe that it was common for her to run the property and to go to her swing alone and that she did so, you know, straight from that back door to the from the basement. And I do believe she likely ran that property alone, mostly in Candace's care. And this was left out of the story, in my opinion, because possibly Don doesn't like that. They, you know, Don tells a story that, you know, the boys would be outside with Summer and and they would come inside and leave her out. And he would yell at them to go get Summer because she can't be left alone outside. So this made me think, like, maybe Don was, you know, more careful with her. I don't know. Maybe it was a made-up lie. Who knows? But if so, maybe, you know, and Candace allowed it, but not when Don was around. I mean, sometimes parents parents do that. If you have one parent that's more strict than the other, they allow the child to do things that the other won't allow when that person isn't, you know, around. Now, I do believe that she told the boys to keep an eye on her because, you know, this would have been close to the time that Don would have maybe have been on his way home. I don't know Summer's Brothers, but if they were watching TV and playing video games, anyone who has a child who plays video games knows they become oblivious to what's going on around them. If Candace was in her mom's trailer and the boys were not really paying attention, they may have assumed or guessed that she went downstairs because that's what she normally does to go play with her toys. But maybe they didn't actually really see her go down there and somehow snuck past them or, you know, that she got back out through the door that she just entered because if she went right in that door to start playing it was the door was right there and that's possible but we don't know Candace and Don have both mentioned repeatedly telling Summer about not leaving the property because of you know bears and coyotes and snakes and this is common too to you know repeatedly tell a young child to make sure so that they fully understand it Based on the crime data I pulled up, I think they should have been just as concerned about the crime in their area every nine hours as they were about bears and coyotes and snakes. And Don even talked about him, you know, sneaking up on Summer to basically teach her a lesson. This didn't alarm me because, you know, I have a child who's a hands-on learner and he needs to experience something or see something to fully understand it and sadly sometimes needs to learn the hard way. And I'm not saying I ever intentionally or ever needed to scare my kid, but this brings into question for me if someone was possibly developmentally delayed or was on the autism spectrum. And I know others have discussed this and Don dismissed it. He was asked. However, many doctors don't like to diagnose a child until they are school age, and Summer was about to enter kindergarten. So, parents of kids with developmental delays or who are on the spectrum spectrum are often in denial, okay? And with her being the only girl out of four kids who live with them, they may have actually thought that her developmental delays was, you know, just a sign of her being different because, you know, she's a girl and they were used to having boys. I don't know. I'm speaking from experience here. And it's been pointed out that, you know, we don't have much video where we actually hear Summer speaking. I mean, sometimes when the baby of a family, you know, and they have multiple siblings, you know, those siblings will speak for them. You know, and then they never have to or it ends up delaying their speech because their siblings are always speaking for them. And there's some videos of her at church that she seems a little lost in what's going on or in what she's supposed to be doing compared to the other kids. And it is possible that she does have delays and her parents maybe just weren't aware of these delays and maybe they would have found out once she started school, right? We don't know because she was supposed to start two weeks ago and she's missing, so clearly she didn't start. Now, with all that being said, kids with delays are on the spectrum, you know, somewhere, many times don't understand danger, and they'll walk right out in front of a car, or just jump in a lake, and they elope, and elopement is common with those on the spectrum, and we hear stories all the time of missing autistic children who elope from the home, and they're later found in some body of water because they love, and they're drawn to water, and it's heartbreaking, you hear it all the time. 
Most kids love anything water related, but it is amplified with the ones on the spectrum, and it can get them in serious, dangerous, or deadly situations. If summer is or was delayed in some way, it makes her even more vulnerable as she would not know how to react in a situation where she's being abducted like you know her instincts may have not been to scream because she would not understand what was actually happening or to know what was happening to her was dangerous and therefore oh i need to scream kids on the spectrum would not understand that or process that now i'm not diagnosing her i don't know her But based upon what I've seen of her and off my personal experience, I think it's a very good chance that she does have some delays of some kind. And I can't say for sure, of course. When Chris and Candace come out of the basement and after she locked the door, they then started talking about Summer's swing and an abandoned school bus on the property and other things on the property as they proceeded to walk up the hill to get back up near the top of the house by Grandma's trailer. And at the bottom of the hill, or kind of on a slant, to the left of that door, if you're coming out the door, it's to the left. If you're looking at the house, like looking at the door, the cove is to the right. But it's a cove, and it's like this little area. And Candace said that her and the boys and Don built it. And then she goes on to say that there are puppies that are currently under there. Now, I couldn't see how large it was under there, but it did appear like someone could get under there, no doubt. Yes, even an adult, and hide in this cove. And the fact that there are puppies in there stood out to me because kids, especially at five, are usually drawn to animals and especially puppies. And one or two things popped in my head, or two things popped in my head. One, someone could be legit sleeping under there, and unless the family goes in there every day for some reason, they wouldn't even have known. Or two, you know... This is a good hiding spot, even if not plotting or sleeping there. And I say this because they seem to have, there's been a lot of stories about random people up on their property, you know, sleeping and what have you. And one example was during Hunter's interview, he mentioned some old man who used to get drunk and then fight with his wife. And then he'd go up to the Wells property to sleep in a shed. And (laughs) this sounded like it wasn't just like this one time thing, like something he did all the time. So it's not far-fetched that somebody could have been, you know, sleeping up on their land and possibly using this cove as, you know, shelter of sorts. So imagine a scenario where a predator was in the cove. It's out of view of Grandma's trailer, and they wouldn't have seen or known, and if Summer opened the back door to go to her swing, you know, a predator could have easily darted darted out of that cove, souped her up, and taken her across the gravel driveway and headed straight down that creek super fast, down the hill to the creek, or to the road, which is back there as well. Or a predator had been watching and knew she would go under there because maybe she had been going under there to see the puppies and waited for the moment for her to get under there, grabbed her, and took off with her. Now, these dogs on the property, and I think we've mentioned it in other episodes, is they're not like they're pets. So I picture they basically, like, throw food outside the front door and, you know, if the dogs want to eat, they'll come eat, puppies included. <laughs> I don't think they, like, go in there to hang out with the puppies. I mean, some are maybe did, but not the rest of the family. I just don't see them crawling under there to do this. And Chris muted the interview at this point after he, she mentioned the puppies under there, and he says it was intentional because he thought the information was good for the TBI. And that's fascinating. It makes me wonder if she actually mentioned some random that maybe they caught that had been staying up under there or or something to that effect. You know, after meeting with Candace, Chris said there was more to the story that we don't know. And I got, I kind of chuckled at this because he meant it as like Candace is withholding something and he doesn't know what, you know. I didn't get that impression from Candace, but I can only go off of what he showed us and not what happened when the cameras were rolling. After what I've seen, you know, from Chris, I'm not really buying that she divulged all this secret information to him off camera, but who knows? Maybe, you know, there was more to it. I don't know. But I chuckled, though, because, I mean, isn't it kind of obvious? I mean, (laughs) obviously there's more to the story as a whole. Summer's missing, and nobody, 
well, maybe cops, but nobody else, knows how or why she's missing or where she is. So, I mean, yeah, obviously there's more that we don't know. You know, would Summer have screamed? We don't know if she was able to physically. Or, like I said, if she has delays, she might not have understood enough to scream. And if she, even if she did scream, doesn't necessarily mean anyone would have heard that. And it would depend on how loud, if a plane was flying over, and how the sound travels on their property. Remember, it's, you know, outside, and there's a big hill, and if they're running down this hill, and there's terrain, and trees, and junk everywhere, the sound would travel a certain way, and there's no way for me to know without visiting the property which way sound travels on their land. Don said a few nights ago that a neighbor did hear a scream around that time that Summer went missing. And Summer, um, you know, people, sorry, people thought this was new information, but apparently a friend recorded Candace talking about a scream being heard by a neighbor and sent it to a YouTuber, which is really not cool. And it sounds like Candace, you know, had not mentioned this in public interviews because law enforcement did not want it to be out there. Now, I don't know. This was rumor stuff I saw over this last week. I mean, cops could have asked for no one to share that information, but obviously we don't know for sure. But oopsie, Don slipped and said it on a YouTube channel, which makes me wonder if he got, you know, caught up in the moment or, you know, said it and it was too late because it was live and there was nothing he could do about it, or if it was intentional because, you know, he has expressed frustration with the police prior. Maybe... If the cops did say this, it's because they know this information will give off a location of a possible direction of where she went, right? We just talked about how sound travels, and they have said they have no credible information yet as far as no suspect or no car, you know, to connect it to being an abduction. This, you know, neighbor hearing a scream could be good information, but obviously it's just a witness statement, right? They need more than that. And they also said that they had no credible information as far as abduction a while ago. They haven't really said much of anything that I'm aware of. I think they only recently said something about not working with psychics. So we don't know if they have gotten information since then. We don't know. I think they would update if they did. But they might have a whole bunch of little minor evidence and not something that's really concrete. You know what I'm saying? In one of the first press conferences, it was said that Summer was last seen outside her home. And we all know the story as she was last seen walking in her home from outside and last seen by her brothers going into the basement. Now, I mentioned that sometimes during these beginning press conferences, information tends to be wrong. It happens quite often. And we do know that they did get Summer's age wrong at first. And so it's possible they got other things, you know, not accurate. What happens is one detective, you know, will talk to the parents and then they relay that to the one who's giving the press conference and then it becomes a game of telephone and sometimes things get messed up. But let's say that was an accurate statement. I mean, if they're going off Candace as the last adult who saw her and grandma, then technically, yeah, she was last seen outside walking in the doorway into her home, right? Because that would have been the last, like, contact that they had planting these flowers when candace described her interview you know that she called on and said he she couldn't find summer and he was like well call 911 you know don knows the cell service up there on the property is crap i mean even the tpi in hawkins county had to bring in like cell phone uh towers or not towers but like help like boost because they were having you know hard time getting signal out there So, you know, I think this is why, after collecting his tools, he, too, called 911 to be sure they were on their way in case, you know, Candace didn't get through. Or it is that by the time he collected his tools, Candace may have then told him, well, cops still aren't here. And so he, you know, called, too, to be like, come on, hurry up, our daughter's missing. I mean, but we don't know because we have not heard the 911 calls. And that's normal. They don't typically release those until later. Candace describes, after Dawn said to call 911, that she put her phone down on his truck. I went to get her mom's phone, so she was able to actually get through to 911 
because of the cell service. People didn't understand who she meant by his truck and assumed this was like some kind of accomplice that she accidentally like slipped up and let out. Now, I need to remind you, when she was talking to Don, they talked via Facebook Messenger. I do this with my mom. Because I have Android, she has Apple, we speak through Facebook Messenger. You can do, you know, like a FaceTime-like thing, like a video, or you can do audio calls, and obviously, or just writing, or talk to text, you can also do. I do face-to-face, but you can do audio calls too, so this makes sense that she went to get her mom's phone, because she had to make an actual phone call, 911, and she needed to make sure that she'd get through because of the cell phone coverage. Now, to this his truck thing, remember Don had the Subaru, not his work truck. So his work truck was on the property. So she meant Don's truck. And even if she didn't mean his truck, they do have an abandoned truck on the property that's likely Don's old truck. (laughs) So either or. Summer went missing, allegedly wearing the same clothes she wore home from the swimming hole, you know, in the car to the house. And so this is how it went. Candace said after Summer went swimming, you know, she was wet, she was cold. And Candace said that Summer's first day of school outfit was still sitting in her mom's car from when they had purchased purchased it. So she put it on her. And I know many moms make a big deal out of like the first day of school outfits, but not everybody does. My kids, for instance, they don't get summer, they get, like, summer clothes, and, you know, they wear that everywhere for summer, and then they get fall clothes, and they wear that everywhere for fall, and then they get winter clothes in December, and they wear that everywhere, so on and so forth, and they'll wear it to the park, or to school, or to dinner, or wherever, there's no, like, separate clothes, there's not, like, school clothes, nice clothes, etc., and junky go-to-the-park clothes, they're just... That's what their clothes. That's what they they. That's what they wear. But I mean, if you look at pictures of Summer, her outfits were not like these amazing, picture perfect, matching type of outfits. You know, many of them actually did look secondhand. Some of the groups thought this was weird because she supposedly helped with the plans and she would have gotten dirty. So it was hard for them to believe that she didn't make her change because this outfit was, you know, quote unquote special. I mean, they weren't crawling around in an outside garden. Right? They moved little plants to bigger plants. And there was rocks involved. Uh, We don't even know if she touched the dirt. Maybe it was just Grandma who touched the dirt. And then Summer, like, filled it in with the rocks. I mean, this is a little girl who played in dirt and mud and danced barefoot in the rain. Do you really think Mom or Summer had any attachment to an outfit or cared about it getting dirty or ruined? I doubt it. (laughs) I really do. I doubt it. I think some find this sketchy because... Those are the ones that believe that she died in the car before even getting home. Okay? So that's why I think they think that. That it's weird that she would be in these same clothes. About around the time that the boys were removed, Don also said that Hawkins County was asking Candace to do another lie detector test. And he advised her to only do it if the TBI wanted it. Well... You mean the TBI in Hawkins County, they're working together on Summer's case, so it's the same difference. But nothing more has been said since then, and neither him nor Candace have mentioned if she ever decided to do another, at least not from what I've heard, and I've been trying to keep up as much as possible. It's not actually really uncommon for them to ask for another polygraph. One example of why they would ask is, you know, if she passed one, they still need to rule her out for some reason, and they're just trying to check every avenue and, you know, recheck and recheck, they may end up asking for it again just to be sure. I mean, polygraphs are a tool, but they're so freaking un... They're so... They're unreliable. They're freaking unreliable. I'm just going to say it. They are. I, I, I understand why they get used, but sometimes it really... Um, can be used in a bad way and it actually has ended up causing people to end up in prison who should never have been arrested and uh that's terrible so a dear a, a theory that involves summer dying before they got home means you know five people are all lying and you can think that but it doesn't it doesn't add up it doesn't and that just goes back to that many people involved, you know, it ups the risk of being caught and the boys have been separated from their parents 
and they're all living in different foster homes. So one would have cracked by now, in my opinion, if they lied originally. So the boys would have had to lie and say they saw Summer when she got home, when they didn't. Grandma would have been lying. And all five of these people are all different places right now. Candace is in Tennessee. Grandma is in either (laughs) Illinois or Wisconsin. It's still up for debate. And the boys are all in different foster homes. And the youngest of the boys is nine. So, I think if anybody was going to crack it, the first one to go down would probably be him. That's just my opinion. Now, it just doesn't sound like that's even remotely possible. I mean, we're talking about three little boys. And I know sometimes kids will lie for their parents or they're scared. They, but again, they've been separated. They're not with each other. They're not with their parents. They're not with their grandma. And they could have just said something by now and they've been out of the house it's like been gosh i think that interview was about five or six weeks ago now maybe a little bit less i need to look it up so and they still haven't that we know of in the next episode we're going to discuss candace's past because it too is like don's is not so great (laughs) unfortunately um, and we're going to discuss plausible theories. Discussing Candace's past includes her first two kids who are now 18 and 20. And once we discuss that, you know, you'll see that Candace is very well aware that CPS and cops work hand in hand with, with each other. And so the theory that she hid her body because she did not want CPS involved due to being like a neglectful death or an intentional death doesn't really make sense since she called the cops on June 15th. 2021 to help find summer yeah i'm with you it's not great that candace's and don's past are (sighs) terrible and there's some very uh poor decision making (laughs) uh in their life and choices there's no question about that but as crazy as this sounds I get a little bit of sympathy when people have lengthy records sometimes. It depends. Because it goes back to products of their environment. And I feel that sometimes that's connected. And it's all they know. And they just continue that. And they weren't raised to know you know, what's quote-unquote proper way of living. I'm not saying, like, I'm this huge sympathizer for criminals. What I'm saying that is in some situations, I do feel a little bit of sadness when I see people who are in certain environments, the way they were raised, where they were raised, who they were raised around, etc and it makes me wonder if they didn't grow up that way or in that way or around those types of people if they would have had different lifestyles or lifestyle choices i don't know it's unfortunate uh you know pushing drugs and and you know shoplifting or or robbing and all these other types of crimes. I had to pull up the whole criminal history. It's kind of, you know. But most of these crimes happened quite some time ago. And that's where we kind of have to sit and go, okay, well, those are all not good things and definitely speaks to this person's character, but how much of it can we contribute or, you know, include it in this story? Does this, you know... This criminal history tell us that these people are capable of murdering their children? I mean, we know it's capable of doing drugs, selling drugs, or, you know, robbing, armed robbery. Um, Does it, but we have to decide, does it mean that they're, that means they're also capable of murder? Murder is an entirely different thing. But... Anyways, before I ramble on there, basically we're going to look it over. We're going to discuss it. I'm, I'm not going to hide from it. It, it's, it sucks, but it needs to be discussed. 
and we're going to consider if this is something we could connect to Summer and decide whether or not we believe that their parent, her parents are also capable of murder. But anyways, I'll see you next time. Thanks.